Hey everyone, this is the underscore sticker guy and welcome back to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Quick Ruling. In this episode, we're going to take a quick deep dive into one of the conjunctions in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that is the and if you do conjunction. Let's have this scenario. Let's say on your side of the field, you control a GL2 Darkness of the Yang Zing and you have a copy of Visa Starfrost in your hand. You proceed to activate Visa Starfrost's effect and it has the effect that says if this card is in your hand, you can target one monster you control with a different type and attribute than this card. Destroy that monster, and if you do, special summon this card. Now, one thing about GL2 is that it has a line of text that says, when it gets destroyed by battle by card effect, you can special summon a Yang Z monster from your deck. Sounds really good, right? But if you may notice, it has the word when in it. That means its destruction has to be the last thing that happens. If it's not, then you don't get the effect. So his destruction has to be the last thing that happens. And this is especially important because it's an optional effect and not a mandatory effect. Now, if you use Visa Starfrost's effect to pop the Giantu and special summon the Starfrost, do you get to activate Giantu's effect? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out without looking up the answer starting now. Time's up. And the answer is, yes, you do. The reason being is because Visa Starfrost has the and if you can do conjunction, which means both its destruction and special summon part of the effects happen at the same time. And because it's at the same time, that means Shial2's destruction was one of the last things to happen, so it will be able to trigger its effect and you get to special summon a Yang Zing monster from your deck. Pretty cool, wouldn't you say? But now let's quickly go over one of the best examples that shows just how powerful the end of you do conjunction is. Let's say on your side of the field, you control a Boral Sword Dragon. And the only thing we need to pay attention to with Boral Sword is this line of text. Once per turn, when this card declares an attack on a face-up monster, you can activate this effect. Until the end of this turn, this card gains attack equal to half of that monster's current attack. And if it does, that monster's current attack is halved. And for clarification, the and if it does, it's just another form of and if you do. Now on your opponent's side, I feel, they have a Goki the Giant Ogre. And the only text on him we need to be wary about is this. Cannot be destroyed by battle and is unaffected by the activating effects of your opponent's monsters with attack less than or equal to this card. Now let's say you've entered to the battle phase and attacked Giant Ogre with Boral Sword, both of which have 3,000 attack, and you then proceed to activate Boral Sword Dragon's effect. What happens here? I'll give you 5 seconds. Time's up. And the answer is, Boral Sword's attack will increase to 4,500, Giant Ogre's attack will decrease to 1,500, thereby resulting in you dealing 3,000 points of damage to your opponent. Now, if you're a little bit confused at how, how it resulted in this, let me explain. Well, yes, Borosol's effect is an and if you do effect, meaning it will, the attack gain and the attack reduction both happen simultaneously, but it's actually being treated as happening sequentially. It's just happening so fast that the game recognizes these things happening at the same time. But think about that conjunction, the and if you do. That conjunction implies that in order to do the B part of the effect, the attack reduction, you have to first successfully do the A part of the effect, the attack gain. So as you go through it, the attack gain happens first, and then if it was successful, it will then try to apply the attack reduction part of the effect. And by the time you get to the B part, Borosaur's attack will already be higher than Giant Ogre's attack which means Borosaur is able to bypass Giant Ogre's activation protection effect and cut its attack in half. To conclude, any of you do effects are treated as happening at the same time, but they're actually happening sequentially. It's just happening so fast that the game thinks it's happening simultaneously. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know you enjoyed this. And let me know in the comments if there are any rulings that you would like me to cover in a future episode. And be sure to subscribe to get more of your daily dose of Yu-Gi-Oh! goodness. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you had slash had an awesome day today.